In announcing broadcasts, I've heard a lot of great music. But I got one of my night behind these huge steel doors, I found a treasure house of music. The originals of the music of the world's greatest artists, past and present. These are the master discs from which millions of great records have been pressed. I heard the voice of Caruso. And I heard the voice of Shalyapin preserved in gleaming metal so that it can give encores forever. I saw one of the master discs of Sousa, one of the greatest band leaders of all time. And I saw records made, music literally written in wax. The first step, I learned, is to pour a thin layer of molten wax onto a hot plate, the beginning of the master record. A hot flame melts all bubbles and flaws out of the wax, which is of the purest possible grade. This is done in a sealed, dust-proof and air-conditioned room where the temperature is thermostatically controlled. A second going over with the flame and the wax is ready for slow and careful cooling, almost ready for the recording of the music. Meticulous examination ensures smooth perfection before the wax is passed through a special slot to the recording room. The perfect wax is put on the turntable, a cutting point called a stylus is adjusted, and everything is ready to record again the most popular selection ever caught on wax, the beautiful Blue Danube waltz of Johann Strauss. The sound engineer is ready. The musicians are set. And I see a record made. The engineer mixes the sound to achieve the best musical balance in the record. Vibrations of sound brought from the microphones pass through this cutting head to the stylus. The stylus, in turn, cuts the vibrations in the soft wax, records the poetic tones forever.
When the recording is finished, the soft disc is washed with nitrogen and put into a chamber with a blot of pure gold. A 2500 volt electrical current, I was amazed to learn, bombards atoms of gold onto the wax, coating it completely. The gold covered disc is put into a solution of copper sulfate through which a powerful electrical current runs, transferring molds of copper from the record. As a result of this process, called electrolysis, the disc comes out plated with copper. In a second bath, the copper coating is further built up. In these baths, electricity flows through the solution between two poles, one a block of copper and the other the disc itself. When the current passes from the copper into the solution, it carries with it charged metal called a drawn to the disc and penetrate its tiniest recesses, taking the exact shape of the grooves made by the original sound vibrations, ensuring perfect fidelity of tone in the final. From this furiously bubbling cauldron comes the master record. After the copper has taken the impression, the wax may be stripped away. This master matrix now could be used to press the final records, I was told, but it would not last long enough to turn out the millions of discs music lovers demand. This called a mother matrix must be made first, and from that, stampers will be made to press the final record. When the is finally stripped, the last traces of wax are washed away. The master made carefully rinsed and scrubbed. Then it's given another electrolytic bath, this time of nickel, which I learned gives it a still harder outer coating. After this bath, the master is washed and dipped into a special solution that coats it with a fine film. Now into another copper bath, and this time the mother matrix starts to build up on the face of the master, taking the shape of the same grooves, capturing again the sweet tones of the flowing music. The double disc is now separated into mother and master, and the master matrix goes down to the treasure house of music to be preserved for all time to take its place beside the works of the world's greatest artists. The mother matrix is thoroughly washed and cleaned and goes into a nickel bath to give it a more durable surface. After another washing and film coating, it goes into another copper bath where the stamping matrix starts to build up. The double disc bubbles in its bath until the tiny electrified particles of copper grow into a hard, strong coating and the... Now the mother matrix and stamper locked face to face are separated. From the mother, additional stampers will be made so that many finished records may be pressed at one time. Before the stamper is ready to use, it receives a nickel plating and then another coat, this time of hard gleaming chromium to give it resistance enough to last through many pressings. The matrix is washed once more, now with other stampers, it will soon be ready to press the finished records. For the strength, completed matrix is soldered to a rigid backing. For perfect contact with the hot backing, the stamper is heated with flame, protected with a chemically neutral blanket, and pressed evenly into the hot solder.
When the gleaming disc is removed from the press, it is ready for the next operation, the centering of the hole around which the finished record will revolve. This delicate mechanism centers the hole with meticulous precision and is checked by magnification. Looking through the magnifier, I saw the rotating grooves of the music itself caught on the record. Carefully, the technician centers the disc and with the lens, he checks again. With the position of the hole accurately determined, he drills it with infinite accuracy on dead center. Now the stamper is given a last washing so no speck of dust can make even the tiniest mark that would create the smallest false sound. On this revolving cleaning machine, I saw the disc receive its final polishing. But before going to the actual pressing of records, I was shown the mixing of the materials that go into the disc you hear at home. Ingredients gathered from the farthest corners of the earth. The materials are processed in one of the largest and most intricate machines I have ever seen, the Banbury Mixer. One ingredient Eighteen other ingredients gathered from distant places are carefully and accurately weighed in to ensure the most exact proportions to make a correct final mixture. All ingredients are finely ground and put into the mixer to be carefully combined under heat with the powdered shellac which is sucked into the machine through a vacuum pipe. Now all is ready and the Banbury mixer rolls. Inside this huge machine, three stories tall, the mixture is heated to the melting point, whipped and stirred and beaten until it is thoroughly mixed to a dough-like consistency. The hot mixture falls out on great rollers where it is kneaded and rolled into a long, flat sheet. As it comes out of the machine, circular knives cut it into pieces called biscuits, each the right size to make one record. The biscuits, cooled for easy handling, come off the belt in neat little piles, but before they are used for actual pressing, they must be heated again on steam tables. Then I saw a record pressed. First, steam is shot through the machine. Then cold water runs through to cool the record. Two different stampers are used in the machine at the same time to press the two sides of the record simultaneously. The labels are put in before the biscuit, I learned, and actually pressed into the record, not just pasted on. Many presses working at the same time turn out many records together to satisfy the music-hungry thousands. The edge of the record is carefully polished. After this is finished, comes a listening test, when the record is actually played for expert ears.
examined and found flawless, the records are polished and slipped into envelopes ready for packing and shipment. They are counted, boxed, and carried by conveyor belt to the shipping room. From this room, the records go out to all parts of the world to bring joy and pleasure to millions of music lovers, to give them permanently the music they want when they want it. <laughs>